I'm a student at the Roskilde University in Denmark, and I'm doing my master in Danish and cultural encounters. And I have been working with snow-related words in Danish and Kalanisut in this Greenlandic. And that's what I will be talking about. So when I mention my work, um, the myth about the many words for snow almost always uh, comes up. Uh, there are hundreds of words for snow in Greenlandic. So I will begin with a disclaimer and say that I won't be suggesting any new number today. I'm sorry. So I guess most of you already know this, but I will just um, say this briefly. Uh, because the myth has, hasn't only been a part of a discussion uh, around the dining table, it has also been a discussion in academic research. And on the one side, we have Boas and Worf arguing that if, in their words, Eskimo languages um, have more words for snow than, for example, English, it shows that languages to some degree develop with people's main interests. And on the other side, we have Martin and Holland. And they are saying that counting isn't a suitable method for examining the relation between language, culture, and cognition. And Palom says that lexical elaboration isn't, uh, hasn't something to do with cultural differences. And I believe that this has been proving, proven wrong before and since this claim, so I won't go further into this. Um, but they are saying something that I agree with. And they're saying that there are a lot of challenges with countings. Because what should count when we count? In an um, analysis of English snow-related words, should snowmobile, snow shovel, snowflake, snowfall, snowstorm count as five different words? And what about ice, frost, hail? Should they count? And what about snow, snowed, snowy? And this gets even more tricky when we are dealing with a highly poly polysynthetic language, as was Greenlandic because this long word uh, translates into we are going to Denmark. So how many words should this count for? And Laura Martin suggested that we should be counting distinct roots. Um, but I believe that even though some words share root, doesn't mean that uh, they have the exact same meaning. So this won't be that informative either. So how can we improve the way we count words related to something? And uh, keep this in mind, I will get back to it, but I have also been interested in other questions. How is the physical concrete word, world conceptualized across languages and cultures? Does the concrete world demand universal aspects in conceptualizations? And to answer these questions, I have worked with the West Greenlandic snow-related words Aputit and Nitapok, and Danish snow related words Sne or Disne. But how? Because unfortunately, I don't speak West Greenlandic. So uh, I have done semantic consultations in Danish, uh, and there can be some problems with this since Danish conceptualizations may have put uh, the West Greenlandic into shade. Uh, I, had tried, I have tried to avoid this by not using any uh, snow-related Danish words during the consultations. So let's jump to the explications. This is the Danish noun, the most used uh, snow-related Danish noun. Something, it is cold, it is white, when it is very cold, this something sometimes moves in many very small parts from, from above the ground to the ground. After this, it is on the ground for some time. When it is not cold anymore, this is not like it was before, now it is water. And I will continue with the West Greenlandic noun, and then I will talk about the differences. Something, it is cold. It is white. At, at many times, people say this word about something on the ground. 
And sometimes people say this word, word about something when it is like this. This something moves in many very small parts from above the ground to the ground. People can do many kinds of things with um, this. At many times, people feel something very good because of this. At sometimes, people can feel something bad because of this. People think like this. This is above people. There is much of this in Greenland. When it is not cold anymore, this is not like it was before. Now it is water. So here are some of the differences. The C and D component in, uh, components in the West Greenlandic ones um, says that this word is most often used when uh, it is on the ground. And uh, this has to do with young people are using it also for the thing uh, from the sky to the ground, but uh, elderly people only use it about something on the ground. And it, this differs from the Danish one since it can be used both and equally about something falling from the sky and being on the ground. And then we have uh, E. People can do many kinds of things with um, this. And this has to do with activities, so uh, such as skiing and uh, duck sledding. Um, and it's only a part of the West Greenlandic version. And then we have the feeling components. Um, at many times, people can feel something very good because of this. And sometimes people can feel something bad because of this. And uh, this is because the people I talked with, and this is only in the West Greenlandic one. And uh, the people I talk with uh, call the apodit beautiful and that it's like art and that it makes them very happy. And uh, yeah, and the more negative feelings um, are that apodit can make you be late or, and that it's very dangerous. And this, uh, this also has to do with the next one. This is above people. Um, it has to do with the power relationship between people and appetite. Um, you have to respect appetite since it's dangerous. And if you don't respect it, you can die because of it. And it's also only in the West Greenland version. And there is much of this in Greenland. And this is also only in this version. Um, and it has to do with both pride and prejudice uh, since they say that people uh, who are not from um, Greenland say that oh, they think that there is snow in uh, Greenland all the time and that it's always snowing, which is not true. Um, so this is the prejudices. And then there is a lot of pride since many traditions um, are connected with appetite. And now I will move on to the verbs. And I am uh, so lucky that Cliff and Anna already worked out an uh, explication for it snowing in this place at this time. So I will be able to compare with this, but I don't have the time to uh, read it out loud. So uh, this is the Danish verb, the snow. Something is happening for some time in this place at this time, not because people are doing something in this place. When this happens in a place, something can be happening to people in this place because of it. Something like this happens in some places at many times when it is very cold in these places. When this happens in a place at all time, times, it is like this. Something is happening far above this place. Because of this, there is snake in many places above the ground in this place. This snake is moving. When people see this, at many times they can think about it like this. Many very small things are moving from above the ground to the ground here. People can't say how many. If it happens like this in a place for some time, after this there can be much snake on the ground in this place. And then we have Nittabok, the Miskrilandic version. Something is happening for some time in this place, at this time, not because people are doing something in this place. When this happens in a place, something can be happening to people in this place because of it. 
Something like this happens in some places at many times when it is cold in these places. When this happens in a place, at all times it is like this. Something is happening far above the, this place. Because of this, there is something in many places above the ground in this place. It is white. This white something is moving. This white something is not touching the ground. When people see this, at many times they can think about it like this. Many very small things are moving from above the ground to the ground here. People can't say how many. The small things are moving a little. If it happens like this in a place for some time, after this, there can be much of this white something underground in this place. And then I will point to some of the differences. Um, in C, when it is cold in these places, in um, the English and the Danish ver version, it says when it is very cold in these places. So this shows that the environment you live in has something to do with what you uh, think is cold or very cold. Uh, and then we have in D, because of this, there is something in many places above the ground in this place, it is white. And this is the same as in the English version, but it's uh, different from the Danish, since I have used sne, the noun we had before, as directional base in the explication. So this about the white and so on is uh, already included by using the directional base. This white something is not touching the ground. And this is only a part of the West Greenlandic word. <coughs> since, um, as we saw before, apotit is something that is a word that mostly, uh, people mostly use when uh, it is touching the ground. And uh, this was made clear by the participant that Nisabog is not touching the ground. So it's a part of this explication. And then in E, um, from above the ground to the ground here. And this is the same in the Danish and West Greenlandic version, but it's not in, um, but the di direction is not in the English version. And the small things are moving a little. And this one is only in the West Greenlandic version, since um, Nidabok is used about a romantic, slow falling um, snow, and you would be saying apivok if it was faster. So what is similar and what are the main differences? All three languages has, uh, have detected something white and cold falling from the sky. The molecules uh, cold, white and ground are used in all the explications in all three languages. And the semantic template that Cliff and Anna detected is uh, structuring all the verbs. And some of the differences. Greenland is only a semantic molecule in the uh, apotit, the West Greenlandic word. And um, it's also only, uh, peeling components are also only in the word apotit. And then there is the relation between the words. Uh, as I said, I use the word sne, the noun in Danish, as a um, directional base in Disney, the verb in Danish. Um, but Nisabok does not depend either formally or semantically on the word apotit, and that's why this relation is not a part of the explication. So now I will get back to the question I asked in the beginning. How can we improve the way we count words related to something? I believe uh, if extensive MSM work is done, um, if all words uh, Snow-related words are mapped, uh, it will be possible to do some countings that makes, uh, make sense. For example, it would be possible to count how many West Greenlandic words have apotit as an, um, a semantic molecule. Or you could count how many Danish words have sne as a dimensional base. Furthermore, it would be possible to uh, develop typologies that can delimit what counts in accounting. And that's all I get.